Hey guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back, welcome back. I hope everybody is doing well. Today I wanted to uh, do a little project. <laughs> we'll see, I've never made one of these before, so you know how that goes. You may recall, if you've been with me a minute, the quick and dirty snippet roll method. And this is a piece of fabric that I created in that method that I haven't cut into snippet pieces yet. And this is another piece that I created, but it's kind of more of a, just a fabric collage, not really a snippet anything. But what I wanted to do was make a pin cushion out of a pet food can. You're like, Nick has lost her mind. <laughs> well, you'd probably be right. I saw this uh, really super cute pin cushion and it kind of reminded me of either a cupcake or a tuffet, something like that. And one of the blogs that I saw that I will put a link down below, she used a tuna can for like the base of it. And I thought, well, that's genius. I didn't have a tuna can, but I did have a pet food can. The difference with the pet food can, at least this one, um, is that the lip is wider than the side. So I just took some strips of paper, got the double-sided sticky tape, and made a couple of um, passes around with some cardstock to kind of even that out a little bit so that there wasn't such a difference in circumference. And I did that off camera because I figured you probably didn't want to watch me tape paper to a pet food can. I mean, I could be wrong, but it wasn't super exciting. What I wanted to do was perhaps utilize either a piece of this that I made or part of this snippet roll piece. And I will also link these two videos down below as well. So in case you're going, I don't even have no idea what you're talking about. I will put that below. What she did, she was embroidering on felt or something and she attached that to the sides of her tuna can. But I decided that I was gonna use part of this, I think. And it needs to be approximately an inch and a half tall. And I could use this as well, but the elements on this are bigger. And so maybe it wouldn't look as, I don't know, patched together because, you know, the pieces are bigger and they're sewn in different directions. This one is attached so that they're all in this direction so that if I cut a strip off of it, it's going to have little more pieces. You get it. So I think I'm gonna use this one and I'm gonna cut a little bit bigger than an inch and a half because y'all know that if I cut just an inch and a half that it won't be enough. Right? Right, right? Okay. And this shouldn't take too long. <laughs> Famous last words. I guess depending on how you attach it to the can. You don't have to put anything on the bottom. She did, she put felt on the bottom. I do have, well, I have felt. I have some felt, just a little bit. Um, I don't know if I have enough to spare for this project. But yeah, I mean, it, it's wow. It's wow, it's ridiculous. And I also have a piece of, this is was a wool cardigan or something at one point that had gotten washed and it shrank up really super tiny. So then it wasn't really good for wearing anymore unless you were a gnome. But I'm not a gnome. So perhaps I will use some of this um, acrylic felt for the bottom. How is everybody? You all doing okay? How is the weather in your area? Depending on where you live, I guess. It's been okay here. It's weird. I mean, we, we had snow a week ago, so that was super fun. Um, it's getting up into the 80s now during the day, but it's still in the 40s at night, so <laughs> my, 
my little patio tomato is thrilled, just thrilled. <laughs> so I have to go out there and cover it at night. I don't have to, I, I shouldn't say I have to, I don't have to, but you know how tomatoes are, they're super um, princessy, and if it's just the least bit chilly at night, it can stunt their growth, kind of like coffee for a 10 year old, then they don't like to grow. It's still slightly too long, so I'm going to throw caution to the wind and go ahead and cut it down. All right. Now, I'm assuming probably in the comment section, somebody's going to say, but I don't have a pet food can. Well, then use something else. <laughs> I'm assuming any kind of round flattish container should work in some fashion or another. It doesn't have to be exactly any kind of particular shape, I don't think. You could probably even use, you know, like a one of these had like applesauce or something in it. I'm going to glue this felt on because I am lazy. And then I'm going to glue this on too. Here we go. And I know that I'm probably going to end up doing one of the uh, steps before I should have. And then I'll have to try to figure out how to fix it. Because sometimes if you do one step before another step, then you have to undo the step to, you know what I mean. You try to do step B before you do step A. And then you're like, ah, oh, curses. A little bit at a time and not try not to get it wonky. I came across this piece of the snippet roll material. And I just remember when I did that video initially, I had several people going, what are you going to use that for? What's what's a snippet roll for? And I saw this and I had seen that blog post and I thought, that's what I'll use it for. And then maybe I'll have an answer so that when somebody asks that question again, I can just say, well, this is what you do with it. Of course, then I'll get the, well, I don't need a pincushion. I'll be like, okay, Donna, don't make a pincushion. Ooh, it is just barely going to fit. By the skin of my chinny chin chin. Or is it hair of my chinny chin? I don't want hair on my chin, so I'll say skin. Which reminds me, if I wanted hair on my chin, I could have hair on my chin. Man, beauty standards are pretty nuts, aren't they? A person shows up in public, some, maybe somebody that normally wears makeup, and they show up without makeup, and what's the first thing? Are you sick? Are you okay? You look so tired. It's like, no, I'm fine. It's just my natural face makes me look like a Victorian waif with consumption, so thanks for pointing that out. And then with all the filters and stuff that celebrities use and I mean sometimes they don't even have you seen some of these goodness gracious people don't even look like themselves anymore they look like totally different people <laughs> stretch little fabric <laughs> and kids don't understand all the time what that it what a filter is so it just feeds into the perception that these people are perfect or whatever. It's like it's not even real. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill it, I think. And I don't want to use rice because that can attract moths and stuff. But salt, they don't like salt. I had some rock salt, like some of the pink Himalayan chunky salt. Can't find it. But I mean, don't worry, I'll, I'll find it. 
when I don't need it anymore. When I have no more use for it, I will come across it. So don't worry, it has not disappeared. It's around, it's just hiding. Um, so I had this sea salt in the cabinet. I'll just use this. And because I wanted it to smell good, I think I'll put some rosemary and perhaps some lavender from my lavender plant, shrub, whatever it is. And I don't think I need much. Get out one of my containers that I keep. I'm turning into my grandmother every day. There's more and more that I'm like, my grandmother would have done that. <laughs> okay, I'll do that. Because once I mix it up with the rosemary and the um, lavender, there's no turning back. I don't think there's very many dishes that have rosemary and lavender and salt in them to where I would use it up. So I'll have to use it on something else if, if I make too much. I have this spa spatula. I love rosemary. I think it smells wonderful. Now I shall strip off some of these. As you can tell, I never stripped them off when I harvested it, which would have been smart, but nobody's ever accused me of being smart. I was talking to, I had a doctor's appointment a couple of weeks ago. She says, do you go outside maybe in the evenings and take walks? Because I can't do it a whole lot during the day unless I go out with an umbrella and long sleeves and a hat and because lupus doesn't like the sun and it will make me miserable if I get too much. I said, I, I guess I could. I said, I don't really feel all that safe just going out and like if I was on my own, just walking down the road or whatever. It's hazardous to be a small female <laughs> in this world. She just nods and she goes, yeah, I, you know, I guess that's, that's true. And I said, but I said, yeah, I said, I, I can do that if I'm with somebody. I said, but I would never do that on my own ever. I said, I don't even go to the grocery store like after dark if I don't have to. I told her, I said, you know, all the women I know personally, all of us have a plan B, whether it's conscious or subconscious, especially if, if you're by yourself and sometimes not by yourself, maybe it's just you and one of your kids or you and your mom or your sister or whatever, and you are walking from your car to the inside of a store and it's after dark. There are things that go through your head like, okay, you got to park underneath a light and try to park as close to the building as possible and have your keys out in your hand and ready to wallop somebody if they come up behind you. I mean, we're looking over our shoulder. Whether we realize it or not, we're hyper aware. That's just, it's just how it is. And most men in general don't have that fear unless they've been a victim of some kind of a violent crime or somebody that they love has been, you know, a victim of violent crime. But women, whether they've been a victim of violent crime or not, we all have that kind of ingrained in us because we grow up knowing that there's a target on our back, basically. I had <laughs> this one guy was like, well, I'm a guy and I wouldn't do anything to scare a woman in the parking lot. You know, I wouldn't do that. And I was like, okay, Skippy, well, it's not all about you, is it? And it doesn't invalidate my point. It's not the fact that all men go out and seek to harass a woman. It's the fact that there are enough that do that it makes women have that thought in the back of their head all the time. Boy, this was supposed to be a pin cushion video. A pin cushion. And here I am unloading all of societal woes on you. <laughs> Sorry about that. I just, you know, sometimes I, I wonder about these things. Oh, that smells so good. It really does smell lovely. So what I'm going to do is pour this in here. All right. Instead of fiberfill, I think I'm going to use some steel wool. 
So I'm going to <laughs> just can maybe kind of fold it up and tuck the edges down in there to where it makes like a little muffin top of sorts. I try not to cut my fingers on the edges of the lid. And what I thought I would do is take this yarn and maybe fill in the gap with the yarn. I don't know, this is not what the blog did, so we're just winging it now. But at least with most of my projects, I mean, if it comes out horribly wrong and unusable, at least I didn't use any expensive materials. <laughs> my Swiffer. Now we need to cover that because that looks pokey. So I thought I would use some of this wool, which is also good for, um, you know, pins. I wonder if this would work. I bet this will work. I just need to make a circle. Oh, if you happen to hear lawnmowers, it's because all the people that live and work in the surrounding area of my studio, they usually wait until I start recording to mow. It's just this agreement that we've come to, apparently. That and the train, right? <laughs> the train. I think it's too big. It's gonna end up like a ball cap. I wonder if I could just make it the same size as the, uh, the bottom of the can. I mean, it's wool, it'll stretch, right? I know you all are probably really happy about all the planning and prep I did before. <laughs> Could have been worse. Could have been an extra 30 minutes of me gluing paper on the side of a pet food can. That's not big enough. Okay, we're gonna have to be somewhere in between. There has to be some kind of a happy medium. And if I was better at math, I would figure it out have some kind of an equation that would take into consideration the hump of the dome there, but that's it's not how I roll. You all have to be tortured by me recutting a circle and trying again. Oh, I think that'll work. Yes, yes, yes. Yay! And I think I'm gonna stitch it. I'll speed this part up. <laughs> You're welcome. Funny story though, before I speed this up, when I went to get one of the pet food cans, um, I didn't have any, like in the recycling, I had to empty one out. I put what was in it, you know, the cat food into a little mason jar, but it was nowhere near time for the cat to eat, much to her chagrin. But I had to hide the can. I couldn't just willy nilly just grab it and walk th through where she was with it, because if I did that, she would see it and then it, it'd be all over. It'd be all over. Hide the knot. Where is that knot? Name that movie. So I went into the bathroom and closed the door, turned on the fan, and I was in there trying to covertly empty the uh, pet food can so that she wouldn't know it and get rid of all the smell so that she couldn't smell it because if she saw it or smell it, oh my goodness, she'd be like, what the heck? Why are you not feeding me? And then I would have never ever gotten rid of her until it was time to eat. She was still suspicious though. I know you were doing something in there that you didn't want me to see.
thought I had the camera on when I glued on this little trim at the bottom, but I didn't, so now you can see it. It just needed something around the bottom. I was deciding between here or here, and I chose there. I think it looks good down here at the bottom. That's that, I guess, for a pin cushion. I hope you enjoyed the process. Maybe you'll find a cat food can and try one out for yourself. Maybe you won't even have to uh, cut out four or five different circles till you figure out what is the right size. <laughs> or maybe you will. No judgment from me, that's for sure. But thanks to the blog where I saw the idea, it was brilliant and it makes a great base for pincushion. Not too heavy. It's got some weight to it, but it's not, it's not heavy by any means. But what I like about it is that it's not going to tip over because nobody wants that. Well, I will let you all go for now. I hope everybody has a great weekend. I hope you get to relax a little bit and uh, enjoy your weekend. The pins kind of look like sprinkles in a cupcake, huh? A primitive raggedy little cupcake. It smells pretty good with the lavender and the rosemary in there. Thank you for joining me today and I will see you all really, really soon in the next video. Bye guys.